remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. America's evil genius, Travis Cook, back with you for one of our uh, supplementary videos, I guess you'd call them, to supplement our radio show over on truthfrequencyradio.com, 90.7 FM in Denver, 97.3 FM in Eugene, Oregon. And something has struck me as of late when I hear people discussing the uh, upcoming election and so forth and trying to handicap the whole thing, and we're still in the process on the Republican side, we're trying to uh, determine who our nominee is. It's really a two-person race between uh, Donald Trump and Ted Cruz. There's still two other guys in it, but who cares? They don't really have a shot. And when I hear people discuss this, I'm hearing a lot of people fearful that if Donald Trump wins the nomination, that he just won't be able to beat Hillary Clinton. Oh, his negatives are so high, they say, and then they're panicking. Now, I want to get one thing straight. Those of you who have heard my radio show, you already know this, but if you're seeing me for the first time on video, this um, might not be something you're aware of. I am not a Donald Trump supporter. I'm a Ted Cruz supporter. He's my pick for the nomination. He's the guy who's uh, political viewpoints seem to most closely match my own. But I will say that Donald Trump has become a number two uh, preference for me. It's a distant number two, but he is a number two. But regardless of what horse I have in the race, I don't think that it's a given that Donald Trump would lose to Hillary Clinton. Now, yes, there's all kinds of polls out there you can look at currently that show Clinton beating Trump in a national race. But there's a very big problem with that. And it's a problem I have with national polls in a political, in a presidential election in any year, regardless of who it is, who they say is winning, who they say is losing. I hate those polls. I'll tell you why. Think back. How is the presidency decided? The presidency is decided on who wins the most electoral votes, right? Okay. Well, when you have a national poll that shows candidate A is at 56% and candidate B is at 42%. Does that tell you anything at all about how the election could come out? Absolutely not. Because the national popular vote doesn't decide anything in an election. Not at all. And thank God it doesn't. The national popular vote is the single most irrelevant statistic in all of American politics. So therefore... If you see a national poll that says candidate A will beat candidate B in, in, a, in a presidential election, ask yourself this. Have they broken that poll down to the point that they've broken it down by each individual state and assigned the appropriate electoral votes to it? Because if they haven't, that poll's pretty much a crock of shit. Now, is there a way for Donald Trump or any other Republican to beat Hillary Clinton? Absolutely there is. Remember, the Electoral College decides this, not the popular vote. And if you have a guy like Trump, you know he's going to have the South locked up in electoral votes. You know he's going to do pretty well in the Midwest. And he might even take a couple of those Rust Belt states that Republicans have been having a tough time getting a hold of lately. I mean, if anything, Trump's message will appeal to those factory workers up there in Michigan and Ohio and wherever that have seen their jobs go away because of foreigners. That's going to be a very appealing message for them. Not even to mention the fact that there is a possibility, an outside possibility, but a possibility nonetheless that a guy like Trump is so transformative he might be able to upset the apple cart and actually take some state the Republicans don't ordinarily get, a state like New York. And believe me, if New York with 50-some electoral votes goes to the Republican side, that pretty much upsets all of the electoral college math that we're used to. So yeah, there's a possibility. In fact, I would go so far as to say that it wouldn't surprise me to see whichever Republican candidate gets the nomination win the Electoral College and lose in the popular vote. I think that's a distinct possibility this time around because whoever wins is going to be absolutely hated by the Democrat side. We get that. So you go to a California or one of these really liberal states, the Republicans going to get creamed. But that's okay. That's always going to happen. And margin of victory doesn't matter in the Electoral College. And you know what you win if you win the Electoral College and you lose the popular vote? You win the presidency! So yeah, I think Trump with the right campaign can beat Hillary Clinton. I think Ted Cruz with the right campaign can beat Hillary Clinton. Heck, I think a potted houseplant with the right campaign could beat Hillary Clinton. Marco Rubio, I'm talking to you, but you're not going to be there at the end. 
Remember one thing, in recent history, since Harry S. Truman, only one political party has ever won a third consecutive term. It's only happened one time. The Republicans did it with George H.W. Bush after the two terms of Ronald Reagan. Bush won his presidency by claiming that he would be an extension of a third term of Reagan. Now, he didn't govern that way, which is why Bush didn't win a fourth term. But nevertheless, that's how he won. But every other time that a political party since the days of Truman has tried to win that third term, they've always failed. Think about it. Nixon in 1960, lost. Uh, Hubert Humphrey in 68, that had been the third term for the Democrats, he lost. Uh, George H.W. Bush, he won, of course. John McCain in 2008, he lost. You see, the only way you can win that third term, the only way it's worked in recent history is to be able to portray yourself as an extension of the previous president's term, and it has to be a, pre a previous president who is popular. Barack Obama is anything but popular in this nation. And Hillary Clinton's only hope was to try and differentiate herself from him, but she hasn't done that. She's ran as an extension of Barack Obama. That's a recipe for disaster. So you know what? There's no reason to fear Hillary Clinton. Yes, you have to take the election seriously, of course. You always have to do that. But there's no reason to be intimidated or to fear her or to make your selection of a Republican nominee based on who's going to have a tougher time to beat her. Because I don't care who our nominee is. If they run the right campaign, they can kick her old, decrepit ass. This is America's evil genius, Travis Cook. We'll see you on the radio, truthfrequencyradio.com, every Tuesday afternoon, 3 p.m. Eastern. Godspeed.